the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise a song of harvest home. All the blessings of the field, all the stores of garden yield, all the fruits in full supply, ripen neath the summer sky. All that springs with bounteous hands, scatters o'er the smiling land. All that liberal autumn pours from her rich or flowing source. These to thee, our God, we owe, source with all our blessings flow, and for these our souls shall raise grateful vows and solemn praise. Come, the thankful people, come, raise a song of harvest home. Come to God's own temple, come, raise a song of harvest home. Even so, Lord, quickly come to thy final harvest home. Gather thou thy people in, free from sorrow, free from sin. There forever purified in thy presence to abide. Come with all thy angels, come, raise a glorious Take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading, if you would. John chapter 11, please. John chapter 11. For our scripture reading this morning. John chapter 11. We are going to read verses 1 through 5 of John chapter 11. We'll read the verses responsively. Begin together on verse 1, then I'll read 2. We'll alternate till we end together on verse 5 of John chapter 11. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 1 of John chapter 11. Ready? Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany in the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this morning. Thank you, Lord, already for the good music today and for the good spirit that's in this place and for each one that's made their way here. And Lord, we're asking you now to continue to speak to our hearts, uh, make our hearts good soil that the word of God had fallen into and bring forth fruit in our lives. Lord, I pray that you'll put our heart in tune with your heart, that you'll give us ears to hear what we ought to hear what you want to say to the church this morning. Bless the special as they sing for us, and Lord, may you help us this morning to listen carefully to the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
Now, Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer as we come to the preaching of your word. I want to thank you today, Lord, for the Bible. We ask you, God, that the word of God would minister to hearts today as only it can. You promise that it's quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. And Lord, I pray that today each one would give their careful attention to your word. And I pray, Lord, you'd help me as I bring the message and I'd be clear, Lord, you would make it understandable to each one listening this morning, not only here, but by way of the live stream. Lord, do your will and accomplish what you would want to in each one of our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name I ask it, amen. If you could help me a little bit, Dean, I think I need some help today. Um, if you have your Bible back open to John 11, we're going to look there and a couple other places this morning. Lazarus has died, and the news has come to Jesus. I think it's very interesting how they tell Jesus the news. They tell him that he whom thou lovest is sick. That's interesting that they would phrase it that way. Now, the truth is, Jesus, if you know the story at all, he doesn't go right away. He waits two days before he begins the trip to go see Lazarus. <clears throat> when he gets there, Lazarus has two sisters. Their names are, do you know them? Yeah, Mary and Martha. Martha and Mary. And um, they, Martha runs out to meet Jesus, and Mary sits still in the house. They're really two of the most well-known sisters in the Bible. Um, I think maybe... You know, you're hard-pressed a little bit when you start thinking, and I tried to, of sisters in the Bible. Uh, Leah and Rachel came to mind uh, as famous sisters, and mainly famous because of what Laban did in tricking Jacob uh, in giving him Leah instead of Rachel. Uh, but completely uh, two opposites, even though they were sisters. 
Jesus has sisters that, that were mentioned as sisters, but not named. And so, uh, with, with the brothers of Jesus and the sisters of Jesus. Um, these two sisters, Mary and Martha, couldn't have been more different. Different in personality. If you notice in the story, when Jesus comes, Martha runs out to meet Him. Mary stays in the house and waits till Jesus calls for her to come. Martha immediately speaks to Jesus about Lazarus. When Mary comes out, she falls at His feet and weeps. Doesn't say anything. Martha goes out to Jesus. Mary is called to Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, and we'll look there in a little bit, Jesus goes to their house for a meal. Martha is serving. Mary is sitting. Martha is getting the meal ready. Mary is talking to Jesus. They're as different as night and day. They're as different as oil and water. They're as different as up and down, in and out. Yet they both loved Jesus Christ and they both were loved by Him. Jesus, the Bible says, often stayed in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. It's interesting when you read the account in Luke chapter 10, <clears throat> it says when He came to the house that Martha received Him into her house. We take from that statement that probably Martha was the oldest of the three. And it might have been her home. It's interesting that Martha, the name means lady of the house. As for Mary, Luke just writes that, that he, she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His word. So I see from the outset there's an older sister who's very quick to take the leadership, very, very quick to assume responsibility, to see what needs to be done and just starts doing it. And, and, and a younger sister who was willing to let her do it. A younger sister that was willing to let her go ahead and do whatever needed to be done. And, and Martha, Martha was a doer. Some of you this morning, you're doers. It's very hard to be a Mary and just sit and be still. You have to be doing things. Mary was very content to sit by herself. Mary would be thoughtful. Mary would be very contemplative. She, she wanted to sit and listen. She would sit and give that other person her full and undivided attention. Now, now for Martha, that would be a chore. Because while she wants to listen, a thousand things are racing through her mind about what she still has to do. And things that need to get done. And so it's hard for her to really give someone that undivided attention. It is amazing, isn't it, how different people were in the Bible? And how different people still are now? God makes individuals. Can I say that again? God makes individuals. We are all individuals made by God. And the truth is, God made you uniquely you. There's no two people exactly alike. I know, somebody says, oh, I know identical twins. Uh, they're not identically alike. No two fingerprints are alike. Nobody has the exact same DNA. You are an original with God. No one is just like you. And you know what's great? God loves you anyway. And God wants and desires that we love Him. The song that you learned in Sunday school when you were just a little child. Jesus loves me. This I know. I like, I like God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. For God so loved the world He gave His only Son. And the song we sing. But you know what? That's not near as precious as Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. That's personal. 
Jesus loves me. He made me. Let me give you several thoughts this morning. I think i give you some help today at this Thanksgiving Sunday. Number one, God makes individuals. We're not clones. We are not identical copies one to another. Think with me, if you will, in the Bible, uh, how different Jacob was from Esau. Jacob was, uh, even in appearance, they were different. The Bible says Esau was a hairy guy. He had hair everywhere. I won't go into detail. Okay? Uh, Jacob was a smooth-skinned guy. Jacob was a mama's boy. Je- Esau was a hunter. Esau liked to go out and hunt and fish. and rawr. He was a man. Jacob would be in the kitchen helping mom. Okay? Uh, that's just the way Jacob was. And they were just different. Night and day, different. I mentioned Rachel and Leah. We could talk about Elijah and Jeremiah. Elijah the thundering prophet. Elijah who would stand up to 400 prophets of Baal. And, and when God sent the fire down from heaven, he took his sword and, and, and cut those prophets in Baal to pieces. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Couldn't hardly ever speak without tears coming down his face. And so they called him the weeping prophet. Always crying. Peter and John. Total opposites. Peter would be the Martha mentality. Always wanting to do something and say something and be the leader and take charge and, and, and take command. And John would be quiet. John would be the complete opposite of Peter. But you can go in history and if you don't, you may not even know these names, but Dwight Moody and R.A. Torrey. Dwight Moody never finished eighth grade. They would say that Dwight Moody could, could butcher the king's English <laughs> and, and didn't have a great formal education, but Dwight Moody knew God. Dwight Moody preached the gospel not only here in America, but over in Europe as well. And between those two continents, had over one million people come to Christ in both continents. Greatly used of God. R.A. Torrey followed him in the pastorate at the Moody Church. R.A. Torrey was a very learned man, had a doctorate, an earned doctorate, very eloquent, very articulate, complete opposites, but used in a great way. Bob Jones Sr. once said this about Dr. John R. Rice, who had started the Sword of the Lord newspaper. Dr. John R. Rice was an evangelist. Bob Jones Sr. said this, I'm thankful for Dr. John R. Rice and his stand on soul winning and separation and for his Sword of the Lord paper. I'm thankful to God for him, but I'm also thankful to God that he only made one. (laughs) Isn't that something? You know, it's a great day in your life when you realize God made you to be you. And it's a great day in your life when you stop trying to be like somebody else or please everybody else or be what everybody else thinks you should be. And you just be what God made you to be. And be what God desires you to be. It's a great mistake, parents, to ever look at your children and compare them to their brother or their sister or to other children. Well, why can't you be like her? Why can't you be like him? Or why can't you be like your brother? You know why? Because they're not their brother. They're them. They're who they are. And they have to be who God made them to be. And so, uh, be the best you that God made you to be. God makes individuals. But now, let me follow that up with this. Number two, so God's relationship to each of us is unique. God's relationship to each of us is unique. Martha came to Jesus. Mary waited to be called to Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Did Jesus love them both? Sure He did. Equally? Yeah. Differently? Yeah. He asked Peter on the shore of Galilee that day on, in uh, John 21, uh, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? But you know what's interesting? He never asked John that question. As far as we know, he never asked James that question. He only asked Peter that question. See, his, his relationship to each of us is unique. 
It's very similar with salvation. Are there different ways to get to heaven? No, sir, there are not. There's one way to get to heaven. And, and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way to go to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. Uh, there's, there's no other way to get there. Uh, no one else, nothing else can pay your sin debt. Only Jesus did when He died on the cross. So there's only one way to get to heaven, but i got news for you. There are innumerable ways that people come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. There's as many ways that people can come to know Christ as there are people. And so we, we know that there's uniquely... I, 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 I accepted Christ as my Savior when I was a six-year-old boy. I grew up in church. I probably had teeth marks on the cribs in the nursery. I was always there. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, sunrise east, sets and west, two plus two is four, water runs downhill, we were in church. And, and I thank God I had a dad who, who believed that. And, and, and by the way, I had a dad who believed that and practiced that, and guess what? I still go to church every time the doors are open. Don't let, don't let people say, well, I was forced to go when I was little, so that's why I don't go now. I was forced to go when I was little, and I still go every day of the week. What about that? See, now the truth is, if you don't go now, don't blame it on being forced when you were a kid. Blame it on the fact your heart's wicked and you don't want to go to church. Just be honest about it. But I digress. Um, saved at six years of age. But I don't, I don't say, oh bless God, you didn't get, everybody better get saved when they're six. Or you hear something's wrong with you. No, Chuck Linderman got saved when he was 25. But Chuck Linderman doesn't go around telling everybody, you've you got to get saved by the time you're 25 or you're done, man. Huh? How old were you when you got saved? Huh? 49. 49 when he got saved. You see, it's all, it's all different. And the way that Chuck Linderman, listen, how he got to come to Jesus and trust Him as salvation will be different than the way Danny Wright got there. It's different than the way Fred Messer got there. The important thing is not how you got there, but did you get to Jesus? Did you understand that you were a sinner who needed a Savior? You see, the woman at the well was saved when she went to draw water. Zacchaeus was saved when he came down from the tree trying to see who Jesus was. Nicodemus was saved when he came to Jesus at night. The Philippian jailer was saved after an earthquake. And I thought all the prisoners were gone, but they stayed there and Paul and Silas led him to Christ. Paul was saved on the road to Damascus and a, a bright light shined from heaven above the light of the sun and knocked him off the beast he's riding on and he heard the audible voice of Jesus speak to him. But Paul never ever preached, well, you better hear the audible voice of Jesus or you're not saved. He never put that requirement on anybody else. Why? That was uniquely His experience coming to know Christ as His Savior. Your salvation experience is as individual as you are. The exact things that happen in your life and how you came to know Christ as your Savior is, is yours as individual as you are. Don't put your salvation experience on someone else. I, I, the, the, the important thing is that you knew... Listen, that you know that we're all sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That, that there's a price to pay for sin. The price is death in hell, separation from God. We're all guilty. We all owe that. That's why Jesus came. He lived a perfect sinless life and then died on the cross to pay the wages of sin for us. He took our place. He was our substitute. God committed His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took our place. He died for me. And God says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages is death. The wages of sin, if I go to God and say, give me what I deserve for my sin against you, God says, you deserve death. That's separation from me in a place called hell. But, there's a gift of eternal life that I'll give to you. But you have to realize, if I get a gift, I realize somebody else has paid for it. 
I get God's gift of eternal life, I can't earn it. It's already been paid for. It's already been purchased. I can't do anything I can do. Somebody says, well, to get eternal life, you have to get baptized. Or to get eternal life, you have to go to church. Or to get eternal life, you have to keep all the commandments. Well, wait a minute. Then I'm earning it. How come God said it was a gift? If it's a gift, I can't earn it. That's a gift means someone else already paid for it. Well, who paid for our eternal life? Jesus Christ did when He died on the cross. That's why the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's only through what Christ has done that we get the gift of eternal life. It's not through what we do, it's through what's been done for us by Jesus Christ. So, so, and then you by faith ask Jesus to be your Savior. You say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. You paid my sin debt when you died on the cross. You did that for my sin. When you, listen, believing Jesus died for the sins of the world, you're just believing a fact of history. Salvation is when you say, I believe He died for my sin. He died for me. And you'll personally trust Him as your Savior. Then God says, I give you the gift of eternal life. And according to Romans 10, 13, you shall be saved. See, that's a guarantee from God. That's salvation. Okay? That's, that's the, the, now, how, you, how God brings you to that realization, that's going to be uniquely you and unique to your situation. That will be as individual as we are. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to put my salvation experience on anyone else. But I don't want to put my love for God on anyone else either. Do you understand? If, I, if no one has to, if, listen, if I say not everybody has to get saved the same way I did. I got saved on a Sunday evening at church. Well, bless God, if you don't get saved on Sunday night, you're not saved. Well, that's not true. No, did you come to Jesus? Did you trust Him as your Savior? Did you uh, uh, get forgiveness of your sin? If you're trusting only what he, He's done for you? And you got it. I don't care if you got it at home, or if you got it at a bus stop, if you got it in prison, if you got it uh, up in the air on a roof. I, I don't know where you got it, but I hope you got it. It doesn't matter where it was or what, what would those circumstances were, but did you receive Christ as your Savior? But by the same token, I don't want to say, well, if you don't do this and you don't do this and you don't do this, well, then you don't love God because that's what I do to love God. I'll give you an example. You can read books about marriage. Tony and Jeannie are going to get married. They read books about marriage and a book says, what you need is a porch swing. <laughs> that's what makes a good marriage. You sit on the porch swing and you talk every night. Everybody's got to have a porch swing. Somebody else, somebody else writes and they say, no, what you need is take long walks together. That's what you need to do. You need to take long walks. Or no, someone else says, no, 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 it's not long walks, it's play games. You've got to be able to play games together. That's what keeps a couple together. No, somebody said, no, 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 you need a date night. You've got to have a night every week where you go out on a date and you still date each other. And so you get all these different pieces of advice and you start thinking, man, who's right? And guess what? All of them are. All of them are. For their situation. Because they're unique. You have to find out what's you and what's not you. I'll give you an example. Dwight Moody, who I mentioned earlier. Dwight Moody had heard of people who prayed all night. And De Moody said it, God had spoken to his heart. He said, I'd never prayed all night and I felt guilty about that. That I should have some, I should be able to say sometime, I, I know what it's like to pray all night. So, Brother Danny Dale Moody got out of bed and knelt down beside his bed and said, I'm going to pray all night. He said, the next thing I knew, my alarm clock was going off. <laughs> and he said, I couldn't hardly move to go get it. I was so sore and so stiff from sleeping on my knees all night. He said, I told God I'd never do that again. See, because you don't, just, you don't pray all night because someone else did and I think I should do it too. You know what? That wasn't him. That wasn't him. was, hey, 
You say, well, he, didn't, he must not have been much of a prayer. Well, if I could have a, a million saved here and a million saved over there, I guess I could go without praying all night. Hello? See, we, we, tend, to, we tend to put our requirements of what, while we love God, and if someone else isn't doing what we're doing, then they don't love God. Don't bow your head. It's not time to pray. You see... Find out what's you and what's not you. What, what is your unique relationship with God? You have, if you, how many of you have more than one child? Okay, whether they're grown or not, you have more than one child. Okay? How many of you would say, you know, I have two children or three children or four children, and Pastor, I just want to tell you, they are all identical. They're exactly the same. I'll wait for you to put your hand up. No, they're not, are they? They're different, and, and you, you have a unique relationship with each one of them. A different relationship. Do you love them all this equally? Yes, you, you love them. Either they're your children. But there's a different relationship you have with each one of them. And you let them express their love to you differently. You know, we we have a Two sons, we have Andy and we have Nathan. Nathan, most of you don't even know who Nathan is. He doesn't come around much. Uh, he lives up by our daughter, Amy. Nathan, we, Nathan's not a hugger. Okay? We, you have anybody in your family like that? I mean, <clears throat> you know how it is when you go to hug somebody and they're just kind of, it's like hugging the statue, you know what I mean? <laughs> Marble, you know, stone, you know? That's Nathan. Just, just Nathan. So you're not going to... So you say, oh, well, he must not love anybody. No, he's just not a hugger. Other people are. And okay, let him, let him uh, love in the way he wants to be loved. You know, it's interesting when my mother-in-law passed away at her... It was not at the funeral itself, but I think we were at the house and all the grandkids were sharing things about Grandma. And it was amazing how, how each, when each one of the grandchildren spoke, you know what words came out of their mouth? I was her favorite. <laughs> and they, they genuinely felt that way. They each felt like when they were with her, they were the favorite grandchild of all. And, and she had that way of making you feel like you were the most important person in all the world. When you were with her. And, and they all felt that way. None of them, none of them said, well, we all know that so-and-so was her favorite. They, they all felt like they were. That's how, you know what? That's how you ought to feel with you and God. You ought to feel like I, I'm his favorite. Or feel like others are his favorite. Don't, don't be unique in your relationship with God. Now, let me give you number three. Allow people to grow in their own unique relationship with God. Now I want you to look at Luke 10. Go from John 11 to Luke 10, will you please? This is the other occasion where it's recorded for us. Jesus went to their house. This is the uh, time for dinner. <clears throat> we are made unique. We are individuals. Notice Verse 38 of Luke 10. Now it came to pass, as they went, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha <clears throat> received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now Martha did not need to be critical of Mary. Was there anything wrong with Martha serving? Not at all. Nothing wrong with her service to the Lord at all. What was wrong was that she wanted Mary to serve the same way she did. 
And Jesus had to tell her that that wasn't necessary. You know you make a mistake when you think other people need to serve God the same way you do? That will lead you to some pretty unattractive attitudes in your own service for Christ. You'll find yourself becoming critical, fault-finding, For what others are not doing. And consequently, not enjoying what you're doing. Boy, that's quiet, isn't it? Before long, we kind of start telling God what His business is supposed to be. And that all happens in our service for God when we get distracted And we don't keep serving looking at Jesus. We keep serving looking at others. What are they doing? How come they aren't here? How come I'm the only one doing this? See? Then who who are we keeping our eyes on? That was Martha's problem. Serve, Martha. Prepare the meal, Martha. That's wonderful. But she went off when she said, Hey, Lord, tell Mary to help me. Tell Mary to be like me. And we get into trouble when we start thinking everybody ought to be like me. No, you're you. Not everybody can be like you. Jesus didn't take sides in this matter. Did you notice He didn't tell Mary to get up and go back to the kitchen and help Martha? He didn't tell her that. He didn't tell Martha, stop working and sit down here with Mary. He didn't do do either one. It's important. Jesus didn't disprove of Martha's activities because He knew that's how she was expressing love to Him. But He didn't disprove of Mary's activity because she was expressing love to Him as well. They were just expressing it differently. Her condemnation of Martha... His rebuke of her was not not in what she was doing, but in her attitude. And in the fact that she wanted to tell Jesus how to have someone else show their love to Him. Lord, tell her to help me. You ever ever sat down and told God what you thought someone else ought to be doing? You ever think about that? We have... um, I've heard it more than once with Drew and Alana. Drew is four and Alana's two. And, and there's times that mom or dad will tell Alana something to do and Drew will chip in his two cents. <laughs> Some of you understand that. You've got children too. And you know what you have to say to him? Drew, we're the parents here. Drew, you don't have to tell her what to do. We'll take care of that. I wonder if God ever looks down and looks at you and me and says, you don't have to tell them what to do. That's my job. You don't have to assign the duties. That's my job to assign the duties. Do hmm? you think that makes sense? Peter doesn't have to criticize John just because they weren't alike. In fact, when Peter tried to find out from the Lord, remember when John 21, when Peter told The Lord told Peter how he was going to die. What's going to happen in the future? Peter looked around and saw John. He said, okay, Lord, what about him? Tell me what your plans are for him. You know what Jesus said? What is that to you? Follow thou me. All you have to do is follow me, Peter. About the time you get to thinking, well, why aren't they doing this? Or how come they did that? Or why aren't they here doing this? You You ought to remind yourself, what is that to me? I just need to follow Jesus. I just need to make sure that I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I'm doing it because I love Him. You see, the God that made them, hey, the God that made Mary and loves Mary is the same God that made Martha and loves Martha. The same God that made me also made Danny Wright. But the God who made Danny Wright also made a Fred Messer. 
But the guy who made a Fred Messer also made a, a Santos Mejia. Yeah? And the same guy who made him made Leland. No, he didn't make Leland. No, I'm kidding. He made, yeah. he made a Leland. Wow. You say, man, everybody's so different. Yeah, aren't you glad? You know how boring this world would be if everybody was just like you? I know. You think, boy, we'd have it all the problems solved by now if that was it, huh? I know. Now I just want to leave you with three thoughts and we'll be done. Three thoughts, we'll be done. Number one, the Bible. I want you to remember this. Jesus loves you first. We love Him because He first loved us. He first loved us. Jesus loved you first. Oh, I love God, but I want you to remember, He loved you first. <coughs> Just like parents loved their children before they could ever love you. You loved them. God loved us before we could ever love Him. Number two, Jesus loves us first. Number two, Jesus loves us faithfully. Jesus loves us faithfully. Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to read it for you. Romans 8, 38 and 39. It's a great chapter that starts out with no condemnation in verse number 1. It ends up with no separation. He says in verse 38, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what that tells me? He loves me faithfully. Nothing will ever separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Sometimes circumstances change our earthly friends. Sometimes distance can change our earthly friends. Sometimes troubles change earthly friends. We call them fair weather friends. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's a faithful friend. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. He loves me first. He loves me faithfully. And then thirdly, He loves me forever. You ever notice how many things in life have an expiration date? Hmm? The food you buy in the grocery store will have an expiration date. If you ever order or shop anything online, you put your credit card in, they want to know what the expiration date is on your card. I can pull my driver's license out and look at it, and there's an expiration date on my driver's license. If you go to the pharmacy and get a prescription, it'll have an expiration date on it. When I wasn't feeling well during the week, my wife, when cleaning out cupboards, found an old prescription bottle had one pill in it. What was that? Amoxicillin, was it? From 2015. I called our resident nurse. I think I should take this? <laughs> you didn't think that was a good idea. Expiration date. Can I remind you that you go to the cemetery and you look at the markers? There's an expiration date on every tombstone. It's, it's simply a reminder that nothing in this world lasts forever. It will come to an end. Everything in Life is limited by time and space. But the love of Christ for you and me has no expiration date. It's not limited by time or by space. It knows no beginning and it knows no ending. His love for you and me is forever. The Bible tells me Jesus loved me first, that Jesus loves me faithfully, and that He loves me forever. Maybe... Maybe the best thing you ever learned was Jesus loves me, this I know For the Bible tells me so Little ones to Him belong They are weak, but He is strong Yes, 
Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Tells me so. He loves individuals. Jesus loves me. This I know. Let's pray together. Shall we, Father, take the truth now this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the plainness of the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for including people like Mary and Martha in the Bible. So different, unique in their personalities, and yet loved by you and used by you. Men in the Bible who were greatly used by you and yet so different in the way they were used by you and their personalities. Lord, I pray you'd remind us that you've made us. You made us unique. Lord, help folks today who are, who've been trying to live up to what other people want them to be or try to be like something out when they're not that. Lord, just help them to be who you made them to be. Unique. And let us all love you in a relationship like nobody else. And allow us to grow and to have our own unique relationship with the Lord Jesus. Father, remind us that you loved us first, you love us faithfully, and you love us forever. I pray if any of the room, Lord, has never received Christ as their Savior, that they would receive Him as their Savior today. That their unique story would be walking into a church on a Sunday morning, hearing a message from the Word of God, and then stepping out of their seat, coming forward and letting someone take a Bible and show them how they can know they're on their way to heaven. It'll become their unique story of how they came to Jesus. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. Right now, just between you and God. I wonder how many people in the room today would say, Pastor, you know, there's, you say there's many ways that we come to Jesus, but I have, I have a time in my life when I know I came to Jesus. And I trusted Him as my personal Savior. And if I died this morning, Pastor, I know for sure that I'd go to heaven because my faith and my trust is in Jesus alone. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment that I may see it? Say, Pastor, that's me this morning. I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put them down. So somebody here today would say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. I don't know if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't have that assurance in my heart that if I took my last breath here, my next breath would be in heaven. Would you let me pray for you? I'm not going to embarrass you or call you out, but I will pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me today? I'm not sure. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. There are others who will join these. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Is there anyone else? You couldn't raise it the first time, but you'll raise it this time. God bless you. I wonder how many folks here this morning could say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart through the message today. I realize that I have to have my own relationship with God. I can't try to be like everybody else or like somebody else. I have to be me. And, and I, maybe, maybe you just have been trying to live up to everybody else's expectations instead of just being who God made you to be. If you're Martha, you're Martha. If you're Mary, you're Mary. Just love the Lord Jesus with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Don't, don't try to make someone else be. Don't, don't, don't be critical of someone else's relationship with Jesus. Are there service for Him? I wonder if you're here today as a believer, as a Christian, and say, Preacher, you know, God spoke to my heart about that message today. Maybe it's helped you in some way personally. Maybe it's helped you to maybe look at other people a little differently as they strive to serve the Lord. And love the Lord in their life. But you're here today as a believer and you'd say, Preacher, pray for me today. God has spoken to my heart 
Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. Listen carefully. If you're here today and you just need to come and pray, Christian, would you slip out and come? If you're here today and you slipped your hand up, you're not sure that if you died, you'd go to heaven. When we stand to our feet after I'm done praying, the pianist will begin to play, Bob will begin to sing. I want you to slip out from your seat. People will let you out. Some, some will be coming to pray. Would you come and just meet me at the front? And we'll have someone who's been trained take a Bible and they'll show you from the Bible how you can know you're on your way to heaven. Oh, wouldn't it be great to walk out the doors in a few minutes knowing in your heart you have eternal life, knowing that you have a home in heaven, knowing your sins are forgiven. God loves you and he sent his son to die for you. Respond to him this morning, would you? Christian, you want to come and pray, just ask, hey, just thank God he made you to be you. And, 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 and just say, God, help me to encourage others and to help others, but help me to keep my eyes on you when I serve you and not on other people. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts this morning. Thank you for decisions that have been made in hearts already. And Lord, I pray that people will respond now to what you've told them to do in their heart. They'll bow the knee at an an altar and spend some time with their Heavenly Father. I pray for these who slipped their hand up and said, I'm not sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. That they'd slip out and come. Let someone show them from the Bible how they can know Christ as their Savior. Have your way in this invitation. May no one resist what you're telling them to do. And we'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, whether Bob's going to sing, God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you? Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, O power, surely as I. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me.
Go ahead and be seated, if you will. Appreciate your attention this morning. Still getting the name up here. But we're glad to announce uh, this is Arian Sanks. Arian, right over here. Arian just walked in the church this morning, about 8.15 this morning. And I uh, met him in the hallway. And uh, just a lot of things on his mind. We talked back in the office. And this morning in the office, Arian received Christ as his Savior. And uh, is going to follow the Lord in baptism this morning as well. God bless you, Arian. Amen. Right here. In the That's great. All right. Brother Bob, you can go ahead and take him down, and he'll get him ready for baptism. And uh, we're getting another name here. We also have someone being dealt with for salvation this morning. So praise the Lord for that. That's good. All right. And we're glad to have Carol Porter coming this morning. Uh, Carol's coming for membership in the church. She's been saved and scripturally baptized. Carol's been coming for quite a while. Her, her mom and dad came here to church under Pastor Rock, I think, and uh, for many, many years. And uh, delighted to have uh, Carol coming this morning. That's great, Carol. All those in favor of welcoming Carol into the fellowship of our church, let it be known by hearty eye Aye. and opposed by like sign. Amen. Congratulations, Carol. We're glad to have you. Trust will be a blessing to you. That's great. All right. Um, we're going to get ready to baptize. Uh, you're going to go ahead and slip out now. You guys can go slip out and get ready for your wedding. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to baptize. We'll come back up. We'll dismiss the service. Those of you who need to go, you go. We'll, we'll have the folks at the back and shake your hands. Uh, Jeannie and Tony, are, we're going to have a, just a short marriage ceremony with them and uh, have them unite in marriage after the service. You're welcome to stay if you want to. If you have to go, we understand, but you're welcome to stay. And uh, that'll take place after our dismissal song today, okay? But Brother Bob will take care of you now while we get ready to baptize. Amen. Well, let's, let's do a few favorites this morning. Let's start with 195. 195, down at the cross where my Savior died. Glory to his name. Let's sing that first verse together. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart. to his name there till my heart was the blood applied glory to his name amen who's got a favorite have the joy 150 150 because he lives no he lives he lives I serve a risen Savior. Let's sing that first together. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Aren't you glad we serve a risen Savior? Amen. Brother Linderman. 284. I always like to see what Brother Linderman comes up with. Just a closer walk with thee. All right. Very good. 284. I am weak, but thou art strong. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. I walk, let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus. 
Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. Brother Taylor. 151. 151. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Yeah, that's a good song. This is Arian Sanks. And Arian, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to His command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raised in the likeness of His death. Amen! And the servant said, Master, it has done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Amen. All right. Let's do a couple more. Lawrence? 276. 276. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I to him I go, no other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Amen. Q? 45. 45. It's still the blood. Once I wandered in sin's black night, and there was no way I could make my wrongs right. Once I wandered in sin black night And there was a way I could make my wrongs right Then that old accuser to the Lord did cry He is a sinner and now he must die And it's still the blood that saves from sin It's still the blood That cleanses within From the highest star in heaven To the depths of the sea It's still the blood of Jesus That brings victory to me Let's sing that last together There are those who rely On the words that they do The time they pray through, but when the battle's over and the last song is sung, I'll go home through the blood of my father's precious son. And it's still the blood that saves from sin. It's still the blood that cleanses within. From the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea, it's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. Amen. That's good. Yes, ma'am. Number 50. There is power in the blood. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Power in the blood. Let's sing that first together. Would you be free from the burden of sin 
There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you arrive all a victory when there's wonderful power in the blood? There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's stand together. We'll have a word of prayer, and then those of you who need to go, we'll go. I'm going to go to the back and shake hands, and then uh, once all that's set, we'll come back in for the wedding. All right, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us, speaking to our hearts. Thank you for each one that's made their way to the service. Lord, I pray that you've ministered to their heart and you've helped us today. Lord, we're thankful for these who made decisions for you this morning. And we pray, God, that you'll continue to help them and strengthen them and help us to be a help and a blessing to them as they begin their journey with you. Give us a good afternoon, Lord, and I pray your blessing on the afternoon activities, the ceremony that will follow here soon, and then bring us back tonight for the evening services. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We do have a card. Angie? Angie. <clears throat> Angie Morrow. Angie, did you receive Christ as your Savior this morning? Congratulations. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great? This is great. That's, that's wonderful. Congratulations to you. All right, let's sing together, shall we? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joined heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You're dismissed.